Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. I've uh, just been to the dentist, so I guess everything can only get better from now on. Uh, so today I thought I would talk a little bit about YTalk, because it was the first open source software that I really worked on. And if you're not familiar, YTalk is an implementation of the old Unix talk protocol. Um, I mean, it's a client implementation. And talk is this protocol where um, two users on the same machine or on two different machines can get a um, live chat window, like uh, text-based chat window with each other. And to this day, there's really nothing like it in the mainstream. And I actually kind of miss it uh, because unlike IRC or um, other typical messaging apps today, uh, with the talk protocol, you see each character as the other person types it. So it's completely live. And it's actually pretty awesome. And it really does make you talk in a different way when you know that the other person can see all your editing, not just your finished um, sentence or whatever. So, yeah, so, so there was... Um, the old Unix systems, they would come with this talk command that would let you talk to another user. So the way it works is that when you um, type like talk other person, then that other person would get a message popping up on their terminal saying like, hey, hey, you have a talk invitation from so-and-so. And then they can choose to um, open a talk program uh, or a talk session with the other uh, person by typing talk their username. And that's how it worked. And um, YTalk was an alternate implementation of this uh, of a client for this protocol that had a few extra features on top of the the usual feature set. And the main uh, killer feature was that it allowed uh, any number of um, users to talk to each other, not just one on one, but you could do uh, three people, four people, and so on. And it was pretty sweet. And I don't remember exactly how that was implemented, but there was some some trickery that made it work. And it was compatible with non-YTalk clients, but yeah. And um, I was using YTalk to talk to my friends from school and um, to anyone I could convince to use YTalk, basically. I would try to get them to talk with me on YTalk instead of anywhere else because it was just so nice. And because I was using it all the time, I eventually ended up wanting some more features in it. Um, I should mention, by the way, that YTalk was written by a guy named uh, Britt Yen. And um, that's, why, that's why it's called YTalk, I guess, because Y is for Yen. And shout outs to Britt, because that's a really cool piece of software. Um, but anyway, so uh, I was using YTalk all the time to talk to people, and I ended up wanting some feature. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So there was this other killer feature, in my opinion, in YTalk, where <clears throat> in the middle of a chat session, it allowed you to just start a shell. And the shell would be in your chat session, and the other person could see what you were doing in your shell. And this was really kick-ass, because you were talking with someone, and you were discussing like how to do something, and um, you wanted to explain like, hey, here's how you do this thing in Unix, or um, let me show you this program I wrote, or whatever, let me show you this script I have, I don't know, all kinds of things. Um, and you could show them by uh, like screen sharing your shell, more or less. And that was, that was really awesome. And, um, and I, we used that a lot. And I think that was one of the first features I wanted was to have color support in that um, screen sharing shell. Because <laughs> it was monochrome only. And yeah, that's one of the first things I was implementing was adding color support. And that's the first time I learned about how terminals work and how terminal emulation works. And to this day, when, <laughs> when I have some problem in the Serenity terminal implementation. I still sometimes go and look in the Whitehawk source code just to see how I did something a million years ago. Um, and 
uh, yeah, that that was that's really cool. And uh, over time, um, I accumulated quite a few patches and fixes and stuff, and no one was really putting out any releases of the software. So it had kind of stagnated. I think it was at like version three point. 3.1 or 3.0.3 or I don't know, something like that. 3 point something. And I got hold of the, um, of the maintainer of the program because the original author had already um, had already moved on to other things. And it had been taken over by a I think he was Spanish uh, maybe Portuguese I want to say Spanish. A guy named uh, Roger Lima who put out uh, a couple of releases, I think, fixing some stuff. And um, I got in touch with him and asked if he was interested in keeping maintaining the software or if he would mind if I take, would take over. And um, as I recall, he didn't mind. And um, that's where I, I went with that. And at the same time, though, there was... Uh, there was some other website, like a shell hosting site called MetaWire, um, that started sort of doing white talk patches around exactly the same time as I was, and there was like, I don't, I don't recall if I ever talked to those people, but they, I think they put out a release of like their own branch of white talk around the same time as I put out my branch. Um, and there was a little bit of uh, confusion there for a moment, but then they gave up on it and disappeared, and then MetaWire, the shell host, disappeared as well. I don't know what happened to those guys. But anyways, um, from that point on, I was the um, YTalk maintainer, I guess, and put out a number of releases, adding various little features, and. A lot of the work I was doing was just improving um, the terminal emulation in the um, in the embedded shell that you could do, uh, because in my mind that was that was like the thing I liked the most about YTalk. Because early on I would do these um, three-way conversations or four-way, <clears throat> but <laughs> it was hard to keep people interested in using it, and eventually I was. Eventually, I had like these one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions of, um, here and there, but people were just not into the protocol. I don't know. It was a bit sad, and it still bumps me out right now. It makes me think that probably I want to have something like that in Serenity. I really do miss the character-by-character -character chat programs. I'm going to have to make something like that. And it's going to need terminal emulation embedded for sure. But we can probably do a little bit better than the talk protocol because <clears throat> it does have flaws. It's all clear text and, you know, the usual complete lack of security and trivial to spoof <clears throat> uh, nature of it. Um, although I recall it, it was using identity, I think, to sort of verify that the other person is who they say they are using the IDENT protocol, but, you know, that's like, that's not security. Um, it may have been thought of as security at some point in the past, but come on. Anyway, so where am I going with this? Well, I don't know what, what happened really, but at some point, I, I think what happened was that I started accumulating patches that were so big and they were changing so much about the program that it sort of stopped looking like its old self and I started having theming and uh, you could do like these color themes and you could customize everything and I, I built a like a GUI toolkit for the terminal you could say um, that I thought was very cool it was called uh, YTK the Y toolkit. <laughs> it was based on um, stacks of menus. It was all in C. It was the first time I wrote a, a framework, I guess, and I was got so into it. I thought it was so awesome. 
And I think the only data structure that I knew at the time was a linked list. So everything was linked lists. I mean, I understood arrays, but um, but the only dynamic data structure was a linked list. So everything was a linked list. Oh, good times. And <clears throat> I kept collecting patches and, and making fixes and like preparing for this big uh, White Talk 4.0 release. But it never materialized and it never happened. And somewhere I do have a subversion backup that has um, what was supposed to become YTalk 4.0, which I was using it with my friends uh, for years. And it was pretty awesome, I recall. But I never put it out. Should probably put it out. Um, at least, I mean, I should upload it somewhere. I'm not really interested in working on it anymore because, you know, it's uh, it's ancient C, um, and I I have the privilege of knowing C plus plus now. So, um, plus, you know, I got other stuff going on. But it it would be fun to upload the source code somewhere. I should do that. I will do that. Um, now. Anyways, I guess that's the that's the sudden end of the story of Y Talk, right? Because then I think after I put out version three point three, uh, then I'm not sure if anything happened to it. But I did Google it a while back, and I saw that someone was at least hosting a mirror of my old web page for it. Um, and I don't know if they have been making any fixes or releases, but if they have, that's super awesome. I'm really happy if someone picks it up and if someone is still using it because it's awesome software. And just talking about it makes, <laughs> makes me want to go and install it. Uh, but we'll see. I'll probably build something like it for Serenity instead now. I'm an adult now. I can build, build things. Um, yeah, so. That's the end of that story, I think, for now. To be continued, perhaps. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say anymore, so I'm just going to say thanks thanks for listening to that, and thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. I think we're going to have a good week, so let's try to do that, everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.